to the special broadcast on Mirror Now and uh, we have a very, very special guest with us today. We have uh, the former Master Chef judge and somebody who loves to travel and, you know, give out a lot of delicious dishes that we have been seeing across the years. Let me first introduce you to him. I'm joined by Chef Gary Mehigan. Welcome to the show, Gary. Uh, you know, it's great to have you on the show. And uh, let me first start with this. Uh, the fact that uh, when I went to your Instagram account, you describe yourself as a food obsessed traveler. And I think this uh, description is probably the best description that can define you. Uh, considering also the fact that you have a new show that has come up called India's Mega Festivals. Tell us all about it. Sure. Yeah. Look, we've we filmed uh, well, what's going to air on September the 6th at 8 o'clock on National Geographic. Uh, six episodes of um, the most wonderful festivals in India. I mean, we've covered really and we're in progress of filming the second season now. So some of the most auspicious occasions in India. We're very, very lucky, including the crew. The crew tell me all the time how lucky they feel to be you know, traveling and experiencing all of these, you know, wonderful occasions themselves and seeing things that they've never seen before. And I think that's the key. You know, at the very outset, I said, you know, what, why, why pick me? Why do you want Gary Megan to tell the story of, of India's, you know, biggest festivals? And they said, because you're excited about it. You love it. There's always a twinkle in your eye. You're discovering something new. And when you grow up with something, often you don't take notice anymore. You forget all those little things and you forget some of the meanings and the, you know, how wonderful they are when seen from an outsider's perspective, which is, you know, which is me in this case. And I've, I've loved every minute of it. I've, I think to date, from a career perspective, it is honestly the most enjoyable thing I've ever done. Like it has just been on many occasions, every emotion you can imagine from joy, ecstasy, excitement, chaotic, you know, to quite moving. And, um, you know, in some cases, you know, it'll make the hair on the back of my head stand up you know you stand in awe sometimes just looking at what's unfolding in front of you and from every corner of the country you know we've traveled you know we filmed Onam, you know which is happening now in in kerala in the south and uh, up to nagaland you know which we filmed uh, hornbill festival in december so you couldn't think of two more kind of diametrically opposed um you know parts of india you know everything from what they eat to what they celebrate to how they look and the languages they speak. So, yeah, it's it's stunning. And, of course, you know, filmed, you know, in a magnificent way in, you know, if you just look behind me, National Geographic, it's what they're renowned for, you know, is powerful storytelling. So, yeah, it's nice to be part of a, a, a series of powerful stories. All right, Gary, you know, let me put you in a tight spot here. India has a plethora of festivals and it's lots of colour, lots of tradition. And at the same time, as you said, lots of delicious traditional food. And with that, I'm going to ask you, which is your favorite festival of India? And which is your favorite dish from that festival? Yeah, it's probably, you know, I think the, the difficulty with, with that question is I'm going to upset everybody that I don't pick. <laughs> so you are putting me in a tight spot. But if you ask me, the... the the thing that I've loved, and I will answer it, the thing that I've loved about the series is this ebb and flow. And what I mean by that is every occasion is different. Every story is different. Uh, people celebrate the, you know, their gods and idols in different ways. They can be the same gods. And they're different stories. They're different. You know, you move 200 kilometers east and the story changes and there's a different intonation to you know, their belief. Um, but that ebb and flow from, let's say, Durga Puja in Calcutta, you know, a city of 22 million people, you know, it swells by something like another eight or nine million people during Durga Puja as people flock back, you know, to, you know, celebrate um, the goddess Durga and that kind of female empowerment and motherly, you know, embrace, um, you know, to then filming, you know, the Hornbill, you know, which is still, you know, a, a tiny festival by comparison, you know, up in the hills in the far northeast and, you know, very colloquial in a sense. And, you know, a celebration of the and, and the celebration of traditions of those 17 Naga tribes, you know, the Chakasan, the Oam, you know, they, they're, they, it seems 
tiny by comparison, you know, and a completely different feeling, much more connected to nature and to the past possibly and to, you know, these these fiercely held uh, uh, and proudly held traditions. Very, very different. But to pick a favourite, I think it's maybe the one that's left the most impact is Holi. Um, Holi celebrated in Rajbhumi, you know, which is southeast of Delhi, you know, Vrindavan, Mathura, you know, um, Bosana, in and around this area. It's celebrated for 40 days. So my, yeah. my experience of Holi in the past has been, you know, at a friend's house. We come to your house, we eat food, we throw a bit of colour on each other, we have fun. It's like, feels like Christmas to, you know, to us. Um, but in Braj Bhumi, it's a whole nother affair. I mean, this kind of emotional roller coaster of the colorful, the chaotic, the, you know, almost transcendental kind of um, celebration to very connected experiences, you know, from individuals, you know, whether they're on the crew or people you meet in the street that, that have their impression, their understanding, their celebration is so different to a tourist's. You know, it's it's about celebrating, um, you know, Radha and Krishna on a very personal level, as if they're part of the family, and very devout. You know, very um, the devotion and sense of community and belonging is almost indescribable. You know, it's very powerful. You know, I want to ask you this, Gary, and it's very interesting because uh, here is a perspective of tourist versus non-tourist. You travel through the streets of India, you explored India through her food. So I want to understand from you the kind of perspective change that happened when you explore India or any country from a tourist's point of view versus the perspective of a non-tourist who is going and meeting people on the streets mingling with them, talking with them, sharing food with them and understanding their taste and choices through their food. You know, I think as a tourist, you see, you know, this kind of crazy chaos. You know, we interviewed a few, you know, shell-shocked tourists from various parts of the world. And, you know, what they see is colour and this kind of frenzy and fervour that, you know, everybody wholly has been celebrated by uh, as. But, you know, to... People that you speak to local, you know, when locally, you know, when you're following the men, you know, um, you know, with Lat Maholi, you know, where they put the headdresses on, they travel from Basana, and you know, for them it's a pilgrimage. You know, for them it's very much part of their lives and very personal. They treat, you know, Radha and Krishna as part of their family, and I never understood that. I never, I, 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 and I think even when I speak to Indian friends, the depth of their devotion their belief their uh and how they view themselves in their community and where they live very few people kind of understand the strength and power of that and i i kind of walked away having just felt very much not overwhelmed by the noise and the color and the you know all of this 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 incredible celebration but more of, of that you know that i left feeling you know very overwhelmed in a sense and you know what's also interesting, Gary, is the fact that in all of these foods, you don't need fine cutlery or you don't need to go to the finest of restaurants in the world. You just, you know, have your hands full of this delicious food and you savor all these uh, lovely dishes with just these two hands of yours. You know, being a tourist and on holiday and working is that you're meeting and you meet people, everyday people when you're on holiday, but not in the same way. You're not you know, you know, we've we've researched it, we've we've dug our fingers into the subject and now we're you know, we're making that you know, we're experiencing that in real life when we're filming it. And so and and the the, the magic is in the conversation the unexpected conversations. The magic is in discovering, you know, an element of a family's history or the way they live that is unexpected and new. That's that, and you don't see that very often as a tourist. Not, let, I mean, you can do a homestay and you can get a glimpse of it, but when you're with someone for a period of time, being able to dig into that and explore that more is is that that's the that, that's the gold. You know, I I, I was talking to uh, one of our assists who lives in uh, Mathura, and he'd moved back from Mumbai during lockdown, and I said, "When are you moving back?" You know, because he's in the TV and 
film business. And he said, no, I'm not moving back. And I said, why not? And he said, because I discovered what I was missing. And uh, I said, what was it? And he said, devotion. And he just had this constant smile on his face. And we, I'd be on the back of it. I've got it on my Instagram. If you look on the back of his scooter, and we'd just be talking all the time. And he would say things. He would just be saying hello to people as if he knew everybody. And I think he kind of did. I think going back to where he was from, he appreciated it more than he ever has. And he reconnected in a way that probably if he'd stayed, he never would. He just, he said, anything I want to get, anything I need, you know, is here for me. And I just, I found that quite, like I said, I found that quite moving. It's, it's a very, very different way of looking at a festival. So, yeah, I don't know if that answers the question. And then the little food bits, that could be then getting off the back of his scooter because we're on, you know, we're on the way to, I don't know, Bishram Ghat or something like that. And it's early in the morning and I stop at a little street stall. It's the busiest place on the street near the, you know, the, the Mathura Gate, which is there, um, and having, uh, you know, kachuri alu jol, you know, just in a little paper bowl. And, you know, the deal is you just hold your bowl out and they chuck one in, they put the alu jol on top, which is kind of a thin, watery potato, you know, gravy, you know, quite strong in aspartita, delicious. And so my mornings were kind of, you know, built around these little points that I'd enjoy like that. And then, you know, scooting through the streets, you know, you know, in between dogs, cows, people waking up and kids crossing the street. It's just, yeah, love it. Tell me, Gary, you know, also, uh, you know, just the fact that you're somebody who understands the textures and the nitty gritties of food and the flavors that come along with each ingredient that is involved in a dish versus somebody like us, uh, you know, people who just relish their food, they uh, just want some great food on their plates and they gobble it up, uh, but perhaps they don't understand the nitty gritties, the details of cooking so much. Uh, tell us how you really got around that. When we, um, you know, celebrated um, uh, Eid, um, First thing in the morning, you know, we filmed with a, a multi-generational family, five generations in the same family. They can trace their history back almost a thousand years and with certainty and and uh, uh, lots of information back 500 years. And, you know, that we were talking about how they, you know, approach their fasting and the family gather early before daybreak and, you know, they eat and load up. But it's that what they explained... And what I loved, and never understood this before, you know, talking to a family and eating with them, is the preparation for the day, not about food, but about the mindfulness, about charity, about um, looking inwards rather than outwards, about, you know, feeling every sensation of the day. And I did, I fasted for the day. And they said to me, when you eat that first date and sip of water at the end of the day, which is breaking the fast, you will never taste, you will have never tasted anything so delicious. And it was absolutely right. So when you talk about, you know, the most wonderful fine dining experiences in the most wonderful restaurants in the world, nothing can beat the moment of not eating for 14 or 15 hours. You know, putting, you know, in Hyderabad, the temperature, you know, in Delhi, the temperatures are up around 38, 40 degrees. We're working all day. And the first sensation of putting that date in your mouth, the sweetness, the fibres, the texture of the skin on the outside, it just accentuates every moment it's a really interesting um way of thinking about food and about life and about what makes something delicious you know this program uh, this show of yours india's mega festivals how did the idea come about because india is such a complex beautiful multicultural country to explore her through her food is an absolutely great idea but how did it really come about well, that's, uh, I mean, you know, the, I can't take any credit for that. that. That comes from National Geographic, comes from a really well-oiled machine there, you know, of very creative people that are looking, you know, in a very typical National Geographic way of powerful storytelling. I mean, if you look at India's just landed on the moon and it's, you know, what a, a, a you know, the, the national pride and the kind of, you know, fervor around that's been incredible. And National Geographic covered it brilliantly. And so the idea of um, filming, you know, as I said at the beginning, India's most auspicious, you know, points in the calendar and all these festivals, and I think was theirs. And I think 
maybe a stroke of genius, maybe not. We'll see on the show the day of the show's launch. But the the original, my agent actually sent me the brief for the role, and she said, "Would you be interested in doing that?" Because you know, I don't, I don't know the the guys at uh, National Geographic, and I said, I, "I don't know if they'd look at me." And they said, "Yeah, if you're interested, they want you to do it." But the original brief was young, adventurous man willing to, you know, and I'm talking like a bear, the picture they sent looked like Bear Grylls, you know, like a, you know, can do anything. And I said, me, are you sure? And when I spoke to them, they said, you're the perfect person to do it because you love India, you get excited about every detail um, and that we see these festivals all, all year. And sometimes we forget how special they are and we forget the detail. And of course, you know, if you live in Delhi, then Holly would be familiar. If you live in Delhi all your life, then Onam and Hornbill are not so familiar. So, yeah, it's, and I think I've discovered that magic, you know, the, the moments that, I've, that have really hit home in this series. When I've seen clips in the final edit, I go, that's how it felt. You know, that's the colour, that's the impactful, you know, strong television that I, I wanted to film. And that's, I think, what we've got. You know, Gary, uh, you have traveled to India so many times that, uh, you know, we've, we've actually stopped counting also. And I'm sure even you have, uh, you know, the number of times that you've come to India, you visited India and you have uh, not at all shied away from expressing your love for the country. Tell us all about this love for India. How did it begin? How did it come about? It's addictive. I mean, you know, for example, this is another level of, of discovery for me. You know, I've, I've, it's, you know, filming mega festivals and having the privilege of traveling around and meeting people all over the country and digging into their culture and their lives and, you know, their festivals has just kind of fueled that. Um, uh, I, I hate to use the word addiction. It sounds terrible, but that, that interest, it's fueled that fire. And I find it fascinating you know, at all sorts of levels. And obviously the food is part of that. Like, I, you know, the, the more I travel as I collect recipes from different, you know, could be chefs, could be home cooks or just, you know, I just I've literally texted somebody uh, today because there was a little chutney that I had or a little vegetable uh, pickle that I had with some momos when I was in Layla Duck. And I ate it and I loved it. And then I, did, I forgot to ask, you know, how do you make that? Like, I'm, I think I know how to make it. But I've just followed this little trail of emails. To, and as you're talking, somebody I can see somebody's texting me back to give me the number of the guy that knows the lady that made it because I want to make it, you know. So the food is obviously important. But it's I think it, it's, it's become, when people used to ask me, I'd say, oh, it's the colourful chaos. I do love it. You know, I land in Mumbai. I love the food. I love the feel. It feels like, a, you know, New York, but on, you know, another level. But now I find it more enchanting. It's the I find it enchanting. It's you know, and you, the, the deeper you dig into the into the past and you know in, in to the history, and it's you know I forget the names and my I have to reread things to remember them. But the more you dig into that, you realise how complex and how wonderful it is. And I come back to Australia, and I love Australia. I'll never live probably anywhere else in my life, you know, uh, full time. But I come back, and after about two weeks, I'm like, oh, a bit bored, or it's a bit you know, sterile or it's a bit too clean or there's not so many people and I want to go back into the kind of frenzy, you know. And and I've, I, I remember talking to a lady and she said, oh, my my daughter lives, my daughter lives on the Gold Coast. And I said, oh, have you visited, you know, Australia? And she said, yes. And I said, did you love it? And she said, I liked it, but I could never live there. It's just too quiet. And I understood what she meant. She's surrounded by her family and by her friends and you know that that belong you know that feeling of belonging is something that I, I think sometimes we miss here you know we walk down the street and we might not see anybody yeah. strange as it may seem no no and absolutely I understand we love and there's no thing. there's no stalls yeah there's no stalls selling you know kachori alu jol or you know dagi yeah. gujia you know Gary, you know, you're somebody who uh, hails from Australia and uh, the food palette here and perhaps the culture is very, very different from Australia, from where you come from. I'm sure you had a lot of challenges also. You had a lot of, um, uh, you know, 
taste shocks if there exists something like that. But uh, tell us about that. You know, how was the experience from uh, savoring Australian food, savoring Western delicacies? to coming to a country like India where you talk about your love for aloo kachori and you've been, uh, you know, how you said that you also love the momos and the chutney, all of those uh, taste shocks and cultural shocks that you had. Sure. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, to use the Horn Hornbill Festival as an example, I mean, you know, in my on my Instagram, first of all, when I started posting stuff, I said, before we get people just throwing their hands up in the air and saying, this is terrible and disgusting and you can't eat this, put it in context of Naga life and the Northeast and that foraging and fermenting way of life, because that's what it is. And, you know, I posted all sorts of things and you'll get to see aside the, of, from this wonderful festival that's Hornbill, as we dig into the culture and the food that, you know, we were at the Mao markets and you see everything, little bags of frogs, little bags of, you know, of mice, rodents, you know, rats, I hate to say it, but that, that's, it is live chickens, uh, in, insects, you know, like hornets and, uh, you know, uh, red carpenter worms, silkworms. And, you know, surprisingly, once I said that, you know, put it in context, you know, before you start slinging things based on, how you live your life, you know, going to the market and buying something wrapped in plastic without understanding where it's coming from. Just by saying that, I think people appreciated it. And I didn't get one negative comment. And for me, it's, it's not confronting so much, but fascinating. Uh, you know, I, there's a moment I was holding, the lady in Mao Market gave me a little cup and inside the cup were deep fried hornets or crispy hornets. And she gave it to me and she, she was waiting for that moment where she looked at me as a tourist and went, he's not going to do it. And I just picked it up, looked at it. And just for a second, I went, there's a reason why this, they find this delicious. It's going to be delicious. And I put it in my mouth and it was crunchy and wonderful. Like it really was. It's just getting over the mindset that it's an unfamiliar flavor, you know? All right, Gary, uh, thank you very much for speaking with Mirror. Now all the best for your show. Hope you keep coming back to India. And uh, of course, as I said that, uh, you know, we here have adopted you. So clearly, uh, best of luck with the show and best of luck for your future endeavors.